Sometimes with Park to Prem episodes, there's a nice slow intro into a match. You know, things are paced calmly. Not today. Let's start with this. Michael Bolton. Yeah, not Bolton. Not the singer. Bolton. Uh, £28 million. Do I want to confirm this signing? I think so. Now, I should explain that today I'm coming back in the January transfer window for this transfer. I'm then just going to play further forward a little bit. I'll explain as we go, but I had to come back for this moment here. Michael Bolton is a 23-year-old English centre mid who can play right back, and I think that's where I'm going to play him. He plays for Liverpool. He's actually on £68,000 a week, and he's been transfer listed by request. Liverpool just haven't been using him. In the last three years, he's played one league game for them. They've not loaned him out or anything. I feel like the, the football manager AI hasn't had its finest moment here. I feel like this guy is absolutely ridiculous. I was shocked that he wanted to join us in the championship. I was expecting one of the many Premier League teams to come in for him, they haven't. Uh, I suppose the obvious question at this point is, Jackie's on £68,000 a week. What are you offering him? And the answer to that question is quite literally everything. We are about to go over our wage budget. I feel like I've not really acknowledged the fact £28 million all up front we're paying for this guy. We've got the money. We can afford that. We've been waiting a while for a player of this kind of value to be available. The contract itself, though, £24,000 a week. So he's taking a massive wage drop for now. That said, if we get promoted, or should I say when we get promoted, let's think positive, his wages will then jump up to £36,000 a week. And on top of that, there's a whole load of other clauses here, including... A non-promotion release clause of £13 million. Uh, yeah, I'm spending £28 million on him. This is a £15 million gamble. That said, with 28 games played of the season, we have continued in some really good form. We are now 18 points clear of third. And with that in mind, I'm okay with doing this. So saying all of that, I am going to hit accept on this transfer. We are going to confirm his signature. He is here and immediately... I'm now going to trade him to play right back. Can we all just agree that as far as wing backs go in Football Manager, he can definitely play wing back? I feel like the fullback position is now sorted. It's the hardest position to sort in Football Manager too. Anyway, I'm going to run the intro, mash continue a little bit, and well, I'll join you whenever I join you. Maybe we'll come back on deadline day. I have been busy this window. Whoa, 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 editing Jack. So I'm run the intro. Not yet. I've played a little bit more. NDI's issued a transfer request. He wants to go to Man City. It was going far too well, this transfer window. Now we'll run the intro. I gave him a new contract and everything. Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Park to Prem. Today is episode 69. Today, everything's yellow. You know what that means. No, Coldplay aren't playing a gig. Uh, no, it's deadline day. That's why everything's yellow today. It's the 31st of January, I think. Is it? It's the 2nd of February. This is a really smooth intro, isn't it? Now, since last episode, I've played 12 matches. And the honest answer is, I don't know what match we're actually going to do today. We're just going to go with the flow, go with the vibes. We will talk about results first. And as you can see here... It's been really blooming good. Of course, last episode, we ended things with a win against Burnley. We beat Luton 3-0. That result was massive. In fact, Luton right now, you can see, still sits second in the league. So to beat them like we did felt absolutely incredible. Miyazawa got us off to an absolute flyer. Back post header inside the first 20 minutes. Luton then went down a man. And from the resulting free kick, we managed to get another goal. It was Roger Rojas in the wide area. Turning provider, Riviere, with the finish. And on this, well, toxically green grass. It's very green, the grass here of Luton. We managed to get a third. Sam Faye battling away, pulling the trigger, and what a goal that was. This game felt big. It did cross my mind to do this in yesterday's video, this match. I'm kind of glad I didn't. It was such a dominant display. Luton, one shot on target, one chance all game. It wasn't even a good chance. This was as good a win as you're going to get. Following on from that, another free goal lead and win. 6-3 against Stoke. Slightly different result this one. Nice variety on the goal scorers. Roger Ospina back in form. He picked up a hat-trick in that game. And from there... He's been rather inspired, and to be fair, so's the team. Look at these results. 3-2 against Derby, not the most convincing, but a good little win. Nevertheless, 1-0 against Norwich City was nice. NDIA, first game back from AFCON, came back with a goal. To open up the month of January, we did have the FA Cup. We drew with a rotated team against Bristol Rovers. Not our finest moment. I played the first team for the midweek rematch. We smashed them 6-0. Did feel a little bit bad about that. 
not quite as bad as the next game. Sheffield United in this universe, rock bottom of the championship, struggling. We beat a mate now. <laughs> We beat the mate. Yep. Yeah. Sorry to the people of Sheffield United. I've seen some Sheffield United commenters in the videos complaining about how badly they're doing. I'm thinking, well, at least it's, you know, slightly better in real life. Yeah, they have been absolutely miserable in this save game. I mean, look at the results since we beat them. They've not won in ages. We did then beat Charlton 3-2 before the typical draw against QPR. QPR really just are a bogey team, aren't they? If we go to the past meetings, here are the past meetings. We've beaten them once in the last seven games. I hate QPR. A draw was far from disastrous though. We followed that up with a win against Burton in the FA Cup, which puts us into the FA Cup fifth round, might I add. And after that, a draw against Crew, less than ideal. They equalised in the 95th minute. Uh, Connor here grabbed a hat trick. Yeah, he scored three goals all season. They came in one game against me. I don't want to claim the game's rigged. The game's rigged. Now, with all those results, we have continued to pull away at the top. I already showed you the league before where we were 18 points clear. We are still 18 points clear. Now, however, there's only 15 games remaining, and I am starting to think a little bit ahead, especially with it being deadline day, trying to get some dealings done. Now, before I show you the transfers, I'm looking for this really small print in the rules of the Premier League, because there's a rule here which I've got to consider. I found the rule. It's in the small print. Teams can sign no more than six foreign under-21 players a broad in a season. That's a Premier League rule. We're probably going to be in the Premier League next year. We don't have this rule in the Championship, so hoarding is the name of the game. And hoarding is one of the things we have started to do this January. I have signed a couple of really exciting young players for the future. The first, actually, a man who we agreed to sign, I think, a year ago now, last January, but we had to wait for him to turn 18. Joffrey Rasset is a really talented Spanish player. We've actually loaned him to our affiliates, Chester. Of course, we got this affiliation after the last transfer window closed. This month, I've sent them a fair few of our players. In fact, when you look at some of their best players, I, I want to claim they're at Hours. Uh, I mean, Liam Holt, bloody good. V very good player, Liam Holt. Nala Diallo, another product of our academy, who I've not really talked about. I feel like he can definitely do a job in League 2. And Colm Stair is the fourth player I've loaned to Chester. I kind of wish I had a really big, exciting goal scorer to send them, but I don't. Right now, they're in 17th, so I'm going to hope with four players gifted to them in January, they're going to do okay. There's a couple of other youngsters that I've signed that I've decided to pick up and then not loan out. The first is Hitoshi Nakamachi, Japanese international, defensive mid, centre mid, all-round good guy. Loads of potential in the eyes of our staff. We picked him up for £1.3 million. We will see how he gets on. Aaron Quinn is just a goalkeeper with a little bit of potential about him that my scouts like the look of. Picked him up, really, because he was only going to cost me £32,000. It's not really much of a risk, given our current financial situation, so he is joined us. And there are two more players I've signed who aren't joining us until a little bit later. The first is Cabazas. This guy is an Ecuadorian centre-back who I really like the look of. 17 years old. He will join us in the summer when he turns 18. And another player who I really like the look of, Rennie Hansen, Danish under-21 international, 18 years old, agreed that he would not join us till the summer just so he can continue his development over playing for OB. And, I mean, when you look at his ability, he is really bloody good. Super consistent player. Love the determination. Great off the ball and work great. Excited to have him join us eventually. He kind of reminds me of a baby Sam Fay. I don't know if that's a, a weird analogy. They've kind of got similar polygons. So alongside all those signings that we've made, we have also transferred some players out. The vast majority of these, to be honest, are loans. In fact, if we just highlight things here, you can see all the players that have left us this window. You might remember Martinez. We discussed selling him at the end of last episode. The right back has left to return to South America, a player who I feel like with Bolton's arrival especially, just was never going to get any first team football for us. Elsewhere, Mamadou Deer has joined Portsmouth. This guy was a good squad player at centre-back, but truth be told, he never really shone as a championship player. We've made some some good money on him though. And the last of the players we've sold permanently, uh, Glenn Pooley. Uh, if you're sat thinking, who's this guy? He's a youth player whose contract I wasn't going to renew. Ross County offered him a pre-contract. He agreed to that. And given the fact we have a bit of a history with Ross County and them signing our players, I just said they could have him for £500 now. And they agreed. So alongside those permanent departures, a couple of players have headed out on loan. Klaus Jäger is one of those, the German centre mid. Wasn't getting enough minutes with us. Decided his kind of development would be better served by moving out on loan. 
loan. Hopefully he gets some good football at Livingston. This one might be a little bit of a surprise, but Ricardo Sanchez hasn't been playing much this year. He was unhappy about that, wanting to leave the club. In the end, Rotherham offered to loan him, a team who are going well in League One. So far, he's joined them. He's played pretty blooming well. Hoping he is going to put himself in the shop window. Realistically, with promotion looking likely, he's not going to be good enough in the Premier League. So just trying to bolster his value a little bit by getting him some regular football. And alongside all the other players that we've loaned out, another man who's leaving us to go on loan is Isaac Warren. I am concerned about this one. I was really looking to get him a move where he'd get regular first team football as a goalkeeper. Of course, he played a little bit for us in League One. I looked at Torquay. I looked at their starting goalkeeper and thought, you know what? This is actually a really, really good match because Isaac Warren is better than their current goalkeeper. Significantly so, I'd, I'd like to think. At least when you look at the polygon. As a goalkeeper, I think he's better. He'll get the regular minutes he needs. Their goalkeeper is currently listed as a backup. Uh, so far, they've not played Isaac in a game. A little bit concerned about this one because he was already getting regular minutes without under-21s and under-18s. I'm hoping Torquay are going to see the light and start to play him. To be fair, he didn't join them that long ago. So we'll hold fire. Might end up being not the most productive of a loan spell. So a little bit concerned about that. Now, as has already been mentioned, today is deadline day. And the reason I'm coming back today is because there's actually quite a lot going on. First and foremost, we have some unhappy campers. NDIA, I already mentioned it pre-intro, he has issued a transfer request. He wants to go to Man City. They've bid over £40 million. I've rejected it. He was not happy about that. Nick Lloyd-Jones, our backup left back, keeps having offers made for him by Cardiff and he wants to go play for Cardiff. Um, I want them to offer him a little bit more money, but that is a concern. If the right offer comes in, I might be willing to let him go because I have already got someone lined up as a potential replacement. And elsewhere, Stuart Masters, our backup centre mid, he's unhappy. I rejected a bid from Stoke for him. Gasperi's unhappy. Yeah, I know. Another one. Uh, I rejected a bid from Wolves for him. I really don't want to let him go. And last but not least, Cole K wants to leave the club. I told him if we got a bid of £8 million, I'd sell him. I was kind of thinking no one would bid that. Teams have bid that. I've rejected it. He's really pissed off. There's loads of Premier League teams lined up. We might be about to lose Cole K. <sighs> I don't love it. What I would say is at 20 years old, he might have already fulfilled his current kind of potential. And with that in mind, maybe he's not going to get better. Maybe I should sell him while his stocks are high. Yeah, we've got some transfers to think about. And alongside all those players wanting to leave, there are also some other players attracting interest. Uh, nobody liked this. Oh, maybe you did. If you like chaos, you're loving this. Now, with Lloyd-Jones and NDIA, our two left-backs looking to leave, I'm trying to find a solution to that problem. And Lee Min is a man who I am looking at. South Korean international, loan listed by Tottenham. We've already had a bid accepted for him. Now, because I signed Bolton, we're massively over the wage budget. And despite having all this money in the bank, I can't re rejig the budgets. They're all locked in. So I can't really sign anyone, but I've managed to negotiate signing this guy on loan. And the plan with this loan basically is that we pay them fees instead of his wages. So it comes out the transfer budget. I have agreed as part of this deal, a potential kind of optional future transfer of 14 million pounds. This guy's 20. He's a wonder kid. I'm not going to try and compare him to NDIA because frankly, NDIA is just better. But if he is going to ultimately force a move to Man City, lean in for £14 million doesn't seem like the worst replacement to me. As I've already kind of mentioned, I'm not sure what match we're doing today. I feel like for now, we're just going to buckle up, get into deadline day and see what it throws at us. And then we'll throw in a game. It might be the game against Bournemouth. Given how the league is looking, it does look like one of those years where league games are kind of going to be not so significant. To be in the fifth round of the FA Cup, given how well we're playing, I don't want to say it too loudly, I'd like to go on a little bit of a run. Brighton, though, our opposition in that competition are ninth in the Premier League. Realise I didn't mention it already. Of course, I've signed Bolton. You might be thinking, Jack, but your top assister, Miyazawa, what does that mean for him? Uh, he's kind of a good bench option, I guess. I say that. He's actually a really good defence and midfielder as well. There is a world in which he could replace Zhao Victor. Although, I don't know. We always knew with Miyazawa he was a bit of a stopgap option. His performances have been amazing. What I will say, in defence of my recent moves, Michael Bolton does already have a goal and an assist in two games from right back. I'm not going to claim it already. The £28 million looks well spent. Maybe. It's a massive gamble. I basically spent half our bank balance on one player and he's a right back. But given how well NDIA's done at left back contributing for us, I thought if we cloned NDIA, how good would we be? 
the answer, I'm hoping, is going to be good enough to get promoted. I am conscious of the fact that we're already maybe 15 minutes into this video. I feel like today is going to be a slightly different episode. I know there's some people who leave comments saying, why do you talk so much? I feel like Football Manager is about 20% matches, 80% everything else. I forgot how many percent went into 100 there for a moment. Please ignore. Um, Lee Min's bid's been accepted, so that's really good. You can actually see the terms of this loan here, by the way. £50,000 a month, no wage contribution because of the lack of wage budget. Option to sign him for £14 million. I feel like that could actually be a really, really good deal. But yes, just circling back to the other point, I feel like with these kind of videos, especially when there's been a long time in terms of matches between episodes, I need to catch you all up, then talk about the transfers. January has been busy for us as well. I feel like it could continue in that vein, as Leipzig make a bid for NDIA. They've offered £35 million and then £1 million per league appearance for up to 10 games. Reject. Oxford have made a loan bid for Lehman. Don't do it, Oxford. Don't hurt me. How mad is it, by the way, to have the luxury as a championship club to be rejecting £40 million bids? I feel like, given our current league position, I can kind of approach this as if we're a Premier League club. And given the fact I'm now trying to prepare for the Premier League, I have to try and keep my best players. Of course, just playing in the Premier League, you get like £80 million in TV money. Given our current wage structure and the way everything's set up here, we're going to make so much money in that first season. It's not like I need to sell players to generate funds right now. Now, can you remember Alvin Stromborg, young Swedish player? We signed him last year without a work permit for £3 million. I have actually been giving him some games lately. With Dia leaving the club, he's stepped up to be our kind of backup centre-back. There is some interest in him for transfer. We signed him for £3 million. A lot of you scolded me for that. I'm kind of looking at him feeling like his potential might be good, but I'm not sure how much he's going to be able to fulfill it. I'm going to remove him from the loan list and instead I'm going to try and sell him for some money. Apparently Alvin wouldn't be happy with an asking price of 5 million. What would he be happy with? Uh... 4.3. Uh, I'm going to offer him out for unspecified. We'll see if we get any nibbles. We don't really need to sell him right now, but I just feel like if I don't sell him now, I probably won't get any bids for him anytime soon. One man who I did discuss the possibility of selling was Zito. I feel like with the abundance of attacking talent that we brought in, he was really a luxury signing on a free transfer at, on the last deadline day, actually. Given his really high value, I would love to try and cash in on him. Sadly, I don't think there's any interest in him, which is a bit annoying because he's unhappy and wants to leave because he isn't playing enough. I kind of want to get rid of him. I mean, we'll offer him out. We might as well try. And if we do secure the signing of Lehman, I think I will then move on Nick Lloyd-Jones. It's one of those transfers where I kind of need this deal to go through first. A little bit concerned now with Oxford making a bid. Maybe the fact I've only offered this guy squad player status is going to mean he doesn't join us. 13 hours remaining. N no news. I'm just being asked about NDI. I'm not talking to the press about this. 12 hours remaining. 12? 12. 12 NDI make a bid. Tarati set to join us. I know, well exciting signing this one. Yeah, he's a coach. I've, I've signed a new coach. He's a bloody good coach, though. Look how well-rounded he is. Completely glossing over, by the way, the fact that NDIA had another bid from made by Leipzig. I think this is the exact same offer they made before. No. Oh, I'll tell you what, everyone loved this. Lee Min has agreed to sign for us over Oxford. I, I want to believe he liked the idea of potentially signing for us permanently. I love the look of this guy. His physicals are great. Not the best offensive fullback, but his kind of raw physicals are great. His mentals are really solid. Defensively, maybe could be a little bit better, but the bloke's 20. Also, this has made me laugh slightly. Tenerife have just sold Sergio for... 2.6 million pounds. You might remember this guy. We sold him to Tenerife for 5.25 million. They've sold him for half that. Suddenly that is looking like a really good sale. To be honest, when I sold him, there was a few of you out there who said I was an idiot. I'm looking at him. I really don't feel like he's that good. If I'm not mistaken, there was a sell-on clause. I think I sold it for a small amount of money thinking that we'd never make profit on him. So it looks like a, a good bit of business by us there. I love this. I'm well excited about Lee Min signing for us that I see Man City make end eye offer. You know things are serious because I'm saying his name correctly. Granderson, who's one of our younger players, is just going out on loan. Uh, he's not very good. His contract's up at the end of the year. Not going to be renewing it. Nottingham Forest have signed this guy, Carlos Monges. I was looking at signing this guy because he looked quite good. Didn't want to join me, sadly. I'm doing everything in my power, by the way, to avoid clicking on this Man City thing. But it is the last inbox time. We have to click on it here. They've made a bid potentially worth £39 million. <sighs> 
it's not a good deal, is it? It's just not a good deal. How about this Man City? I want £25 million. Pounds no, you know what? I want £35 million pounds now and £25 million in six months and a potential profit sell-on. And I want him loaned back for the year. How does that sound? They've actually counter-negotiated. £20 million pounds now, £50 million in the summer. I mean, we're a long way apart here, aren't we? They've locked in a deal worth £48 million. I'm going to reject it. I, I could be crazy. I could leave, live to regret it. I just feel like he's better than that. I feel like I could sell him in a year for £100 million. And don't forget, he only just signed a new deal. If he doesn't get promoted with us, he gets to, you know, to leave for £5 million. If he does get promoted with us, we've got him signed for another three years till 2038. I want this guy to become a legend of this club. I don't need to sell him. Although with Lee Min now joining us, and we are going to register him, Lloyd-Jones, I'm now kind of happy to sell. We signed him last January for £1.2 million as a squad player. He's not been very good as a squad player. I'll offer him out for 2.2 million. I think Cardiff did bid around that, although they did it with lots of instalment and clausy bits. I'll hope that they can maybe afford that. Panny Gwynn is unhappy after a row with me. I don't know who this bloke is. Uh, okay, he's a player from our academy in the under-21s. I did know who he was. I have noticed. He's had a fight with me, and now he's getting offered contracts by teams in Jamaica. He's never going to be good enough for us. It's fine. Zito didn't have any bids made for him. Stromberg didn't have any bids made for him either, despite the fact there were some teams apparently maybe interested. At the moment, he is a good little squad player for us, so I don't mind keeping hold of him. I don't feel like we're going to necessarily miss out on a chance to sell him by not selling him now. Obviously, we signed him for three million. His valuation is decent. He's done fine as a backup emergency championship centre-back. He can do a job for the rest of the season. Leipzig make a bid for NDIA. This is worse than the other offer they made before. Do they understand how negotiations work? I don't think they do. Very interested to know down in the comments. Also, let me know you got to this point in the video. How much would you sell Musa for if you're in my situation? Or do you view him a bit like I do, where he's somewhat unsellable because of the scarcity of fullbacks in Football Manager? I do feel like with this guy and Bolton, we have our two fullbacks to the end of this save game. Genuinely, they are two players who I look at and believe could play in the Champions League for us. I was thinking maybe I could sign some young players, obviously with that Premier League rule around youngsters signing for us. I don't know if I sign any players kind of during the spring period. If they join us before our promotion's officially confirmed, I have a feeling they don't count towards that kind of uh, counter of six under 21 players for the year. Given our wage situation, I can't offer wages to players and the game just doesn't let me rejig the budget. I did already ask the board about increasing the wage budget. I don't have the option to do it again. They said no, and I mean, you could see here, uh, work within wage budget, struggling. Uh, that, that's one way of phrasing it. I did notice as well, Sam Fay attracting interest. Sam Fay is just one of those untouchable players in our team, isn't he? He's been so good this year. 17 goals, 10 assists. Of course, start the season hot as a striker. But that's 28 goals and kind of assists or goal contributions in 28 games as a centre attack in mid. I feel like the numbers of our players kind of go over my head at times. Look how good Fay, Ospina and Rojas have been. And Goma has been very good as well. Well, what I will say is when it comes to Ngoma's assists, he's a, a bit of a corner merchant. Hadn't really dawned on me. We're in February. We've got six players with double figures for goals. That's mad. No offers for Lloyd Jones. We've had so many bids for him. And now that I've signed Lee Min, no one wants him. Of course. This is how football manager works, isn't it? Nice have made a bid for Colke and... Leipzig are back for NDIA. Uh, I mean, this bid is not bad for Colke. My concern with Colke is that kind of his current ability and potential are so similar that maybe he's just not going to develop anymore. Given the fact he's 20, maybe AI teams that haven't fully scouted him view him as having all this potential. He's been a good player for us, but I don't feel like he's an indispensable player. Would it be blasphemous to sell him? I'm really considering it. They've offered £8 million. I need more than £8 million. If you give me £10 million and 50% of profit, then we can talk. I think I have to take this bid, everyone. And I know that Colke has a fan club, and I do like Colke a lot, but I do just feel like he's not going to improve a great deal. I know some people really put a lot of stock in current ability and potential ability stars. The only time I ever really use the stars is for judging if players have reached their potential and, of course, the judging player potential in itself. I, I love Cole K. 
He doesn't strike me as kind of a mid-table Premier League player, and 10 million is a lot. Also, this bid for Musa is shocking, so reject. Five hours left. He's not gone yet. Man City could still turn up with a monster bid, and I could be very stressed. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Uh, relief here, really. The transfer little tab on the left doesn't have a little red icon. Every time that happens, little heart-in-mouth moment. Cold case sale is set to be confirmed at £10 million. Uh, some people might be shocked that I'm just doing this sale, but I, I feel like I have to. We'll give him some nice, encouraging words. He is a player whose career I will keep an eye on, and I do feel like he's a great player in, in many ways. Like I said, this sale might feel like it's coming out of nowhere, but I do feel like it just frees up a spot in our team for us to rotate things a little bit more. We are blessed with an abundance of centre-attacking mid-talent. Ultimately, as a championship club, we're getting a bit of £10 million for our sub-centre attacking bid. I think I have to take it. That deal there is officially confirmed. Can I now rejig the wage budget? No. Okay, I was hoping some of that money might have gone into the wage budget. No, uh, but we do still have £55 million transfer budget. Of course we do. I am just having a little look at players that might be interested in joining us that are available. Uh, there's a, a Real Madrid wing-back. That always gets me excited now that I'm seeing his attributes. Much less excited. Juan Daniel Martez, it just sounds like a great player, doesn't he? Uh, I mean, he's got great jumping reach, insane heading. He is a very, very good centre-back, but he's no better than Gasperi. Jao Miranda apparently might be interested in joining us. £40 million for this guy, he's a right mid. I don't even play with right mids, but he's really, really good. Like, really good. I'm just going to make a bid here. Can I even afford that? I can afford this technically. Uh, although he can't play another game for a competitive club because he's already played for two teams this year. Always read the small print. I kind of want to sign this guy just to see how much his wage demands would be. They signed him for £4.6 I was about to buy him for... 40 million. That would have been a scam. Of all the players I've got scouted, there's a guy called Wesley Gomez here, who's 19. I mean, he does look very, very good, doesn't he? Wesley. Is he, is he better than Cole K? Pro probably not. He's not as quick. I mean, when you look at it like that, if I sign this guy for 90 to 5.4 million, that would be a good bit of business, right? He's 19. What I will say is when I look at this screen here, his potential kind of rating is kind of where his current ability is. So he might not even get that much better. Bit confused as well. How do we have a scout report on him on this screen? But when I click on him, I don't have one. I assume there's a really obvious logical explanation for that. I just don't understand. I'm going to make a bid and see how much I might have to pay for him. I've negotiated a deal of 3.4 million for him. I feel like just Cole K out, Wesley Gomez in would be genius. Um, obviously slightly concerned about the potential, also concerned about the fact, can I even afford his wages? Given the fact we're over our wage budget, our wage kind of amount that we can offer might be really restricted. Although looking at it, it doesn't seem like it is. So maybe I can just sign this bloke. He wants a non-promotion release clause. I feel like if I don't get promoted at this point, I'm absolutely screwed, but I'm confident in our ability to get promoted. I'm going to offer him a 50% wage rise upon promotion, but I want a contract extension after promotion of three years locked in. He's asked for a little bit more money, but in the grand scheme of things, I feel like it's quite a good deal. Am I crazy? I don't think so. Uh, at least not this time. I mean, in general, yeah, I do make questionable life decisions. We have had now some bids for Lloyd Jones as well. Teams offering that 1.7 million I was hoping for. With Lehman signed, I don't really view Lloyd Jones here as a, a long term left back backup option. So happy to cash in on him. And in some other news, Gomez has been granted a work permit. Uh, we have now got a rushed scout report for him in. Like I said, there aren't question marks over. Is he actually going to improve at all? But even if he doesn't improve, he's just really bloody good. I'm going to confirm this one. Welcome, Wesley. I feel like I should be looking at more players suddenly. Still confused by the fact we're over our wage budget and yet I could offer kind of those fairly healthy wages for him. I feel like usually you get really restricted in that situation. Who are the best 19-year-olds I've got scouted? Baron Gendry plays for Mets. I think I remember looking at this guy in my own time. He actually looks quite good, doesn't he? Is he amazing or am I overrating him? How much do, how much do they want? Nine million. That's not happening, is it? Nine million. It's interesting that when you sort by kind of current ability, there's some good players here, but their potential is much more of a question mark. Do you want players that have blossomed early, or do you take a punt on players that might take a little bit longer to develop, but would be way better? We both know the answer to that. Potential is king. I'm looking at players who are aged at most 17. That really does limit us to kind of players that aren't abroad. Matthew Williamson here, though. Barbadian International 16. Now, maybe I'm just clouded by the potential here, but I do like the look of his mentals a lot. Is he good? 
I mean, he has an ambitious personality that I hate. Uh, how much do Millwall want for their 17-year-old from Barbados? You know what? 200k to have a punt. Why not? You don't win the lottery if you don't buy a ticket. He could be awful, but for 200k, I, we'll sign him and see if he develops. Probably going to turn out now, isn't it, that my scouts are just lying about how good he could be, but I, I'm going to trust the scouts. I'm just looking at some slightly older players who are available. There is Justin Joel Schnidler here. Is he good? He look 20 years old, 13 million pound release clause. He has at Cologne. He's not bad. He doesn't wow me. I mean, I li might live to regret that. I'm not I'm not wooed. The more I'm looking through the options listed here, the l less optimistic I am about finding some mad bargain that's available. There's some good young players here, but yeah, I don't know. There there's nothing that's making me think, oh my word, I need to just throw piles of money at them. Spotted this Costa Rican, realised he's a winger. Otherwise, I definitely would have signed him just to keep the Costa Rican theme going. I mean, I could just sign a player for the sake of signing players, but that really doesn't seem like the, the wisest ideas. I, I'm just looking for all these players we've got scouted. Some of them have some really good potential and might be great players, but you know, maybe it's a risk to sign players now. One player that we looked at a little while ago, I think it might have been last summer, and then he had like a broken leg or a really serious injury at the time. Yeah, damaged cruciate ligaments. That was the one. Out for seven months. Lamine and Dor, Senegalese player playing for Generation Foot. I know we have an abundance of kind of young centre attacking mids. How much is he going to cost? 150 to 500k. You already know what I'm thinking. I'm doing it. Generation Foot accepted that bid of 150k. Uh, he wants to be a fringe player. Does he mind being a breakthrough prospect? Doesn't like the idea of that. He only wants £300. I'll tell you what, I'll give you £400. Don't know why I can only sign in for one year, but we'll allow it. I'm going to add a contract extension after promotion here. Get rid of the yearly wage rise. I mean, he only wants £400. I'll give him £500. Kind of wish we could lock him in on a longer term deal, but for 150k, it's such a, a kind of a no risk transfer. It's a bit similar to this 200k for Matthew Wilson. Don't get me wrong, it's not insignificant money, but for us right now, we can afford to take a risk or two. Imagine if Matthew Wilson turns out to really not be good. I'm going to be so angry, but I, ju I just like the vibes of signing this guy. Lloyd-Jones is set to join Cardiff City. £1.7 million received for him. I'm kind of okay with. We signed him for a little less than that at £1.2 million based on his performances for us. He's just not good enough, really. Two hours left of the window. Is there time to get these l uh, bids done? Why are Manchester United making a bid now for NDIA? Are they taking the piss? Manchester United have not made a bid all window, and then they turn up with two hours left and do this to me. I mean, if you want him at this point, it's going to have to be a big sum of money because you're turning up so late. I want a hundred million pounds. No, we'll go ninety. A hundred million's a bit much, isn't it? Even I know that. Yeah, I didn't think they'd like that. Endor's work permit application's been turned down. We'll apply for that. Let's rush the paperwork through. Let's hope we've got a good fax machine here at Rugby because there's one hour remaining. Is he going to get the work permit? No. I do have two ASC slots, apparently, though. Kind of lost track of how many we had. You know what? Sure, Endor can have one. And also, Matthew Wilson is joining us too. You might call these transfers that I've done just because I'm bored. I call them investments for the future. Why is his potential ability now two and a half star? Which scout was it that looked at him? Who do we need to fire? I mean, maybe my coaching staff just don't know ball. Maybe he'll turn out to actually be really, really good. Or maybe this is the biggest waste of money ever. I mean, he's from Barbados, so that's exciting at the very least. 30 seconds left of the window. One last signing. Lamina Endor joins us. A little bit of a concern about this guy's injury history, but given his potential ability and his insane technicals and mentals, even if he's not the quickest of attacking midfielders, he's a bit of an Urzel, really. Not going to do much defending. For 150k, has to be worth a little punt. Okay, deadline day has passed. We've sold some players. We've signed some players. I feel like 10 million for Cole K is actually quite smart business. Ignore his current value. He never would have been worth that for us. And I mean, in terms of signings, I love this signing of Gomez. I actually really, really like Wesley Gomez here. Uh, we probably should train him where we're going to play him, which will be as an attacking midfielder. I'm going to put his focus on Shadow Striker just because it's the attacking midfielder role that does the best kind of focus on physicals. Do need him to potentially get a little bit quicker. How much he'll actually improve, I, I don't actually know. I mean, question marks over that, isn't there? Also, this Lee Min signing, I love this signing. You know, an option to sign him for 14.5 million. 
Even if I still have NDIA, I'd be tempted to sign this bloke for that kind of money. He looks mad. Has just dawned on me. Probably should register some players, shouldn't we? Pro probably should make sure I register the new signings, or we could be in trouble. One thing I'm a little bit concerned about is lack of players who have homegrown in nation. That is something that is somewhat important for English competitions. The good news is we've got a whole host of players who will be homegrown at club and nation over the next few years. Might have to be a little bit careful with registration next year, mind you. Okay, deadline day is done. I've sorted out the squad. I think in terms of matches today, we're going to do the one against Bournemouth. It's in a couple of weeks' time. Um, they were predicted to finish first. They're currently in sixth. We've scraped to win against them previously, but it was when all our players were on international duty. I'd love to see us beat them handsomely. Let's see if we can go make that happen. Today's episode has already been on the longer side. I'll keep things brief. We battered Bristol City 4-0. Ricky D didn't even play for them. And now we head into this midweek game against Bournemouth. A win here could be massive. Now, in terms of team news for today's game, no one is missing. This feels like a rarity. No injuries to speak of. Team has been rested and rotated. Michael Bolton going to make his live commentary debut in at right back. Hopefully, he can keep his great start to his time at the club going elsewhere where on the bench Lee Min is going to make it as is Wesley Gomez this guy I don't know I really like the look of him I I could be kidding myself I'm still not 100% sold on him I brought him on off the bench last game but he didn't play long enough to get a rating I might live to regret this I think I'm going to start him is he better than Ingoma is he better than let me just check here is he better than Ingoma yes yes he is we're 20 minutes into this half already, still nil-nil. We're having a load of chances, we're not seeing any of them. Gomez on a 7.0 rating is good. NDIA still on the pitch, still doing throw-ins, despite the fact we rejected all those bids. To be fair to him, despite requesting a transfer, he's not actually kicked up that much of a stink, so that I can respect from him. And he's doing the business on the pitch as he steals it away there. Faye's put in behind and Faye has just made Bursic in goal look like a mug. I think there's still over 10 games left the championship season and if I'm not mistaken I think we're only eight goals away from the record for goals in a season with finishing like that we are going to demolish the championship goal scoring record five minutes left of the half it's a very foggy day here isn't it in the town of rugby like you can barely see what's going on on, on the far side uh, with the floodlights and the fog Jerdanak can he see where he's going he can Riviere back to Jerdanak making Bournemouth chase shadows a long away day for the Bournemouth fans who have made the trek up north for this game let's give them something to be miserable about on the way home shall we NDIA Zhao Victor pulling the strings gives it forward to Faye has a goal to his name gives it to Rojas Ospina in behind Ospina with the goal it's 2-0 that's his 20th of the year to be fair I was very critical wasn't I of Ospina last episode we dropped him I said he hadn't been good enough he has found his finishing boots lately and that there a tidy little goal to double our lead four minutes of added time at the end of this first half is there going to be anything late the answer is no but two goals to the good we're playing very very well you're doing brilliantly keep it going the players look happy I'm happy maybe I should have been shouty shouty at them maybe I've been too kind there but I feel like everything's just going to plan right now Gomez let's get another let's make it free to start the second half NDIA Zhao Victor the defense in mid has just scored a stupendous goal in off the post and into the bottom corner you know, it was a good goal because it made my voice crack. A little bit of build-up play on the near side, but this was all on Zhao Victor. He picked up the ball and still had a hell of a lot to do here. This finish through traffic, I mean, that's yummy, isn't it? That is yummy. Uh, three goals up at this game. I'm going to bring in Lee Min. I'm going to bring in Marino. A couple of the players who I want to give game time to and really keep happy, I think, just have to come on here. Kamara, you can come on as well. You know what, Kamara, we're training you to play right back. Come on and play right back. Bolton, I'm sorry, mate. I know I spent £28 million on you. You can have a rest. Rojas, by the way, on an 8.6 rating. The man is just having fun up front, isn't he? The Costa Rican international. Two assists in this game. Who needs goal scoring when you can just set up goals like he has been today? Bournemouth have been second best everywhere. Trying to make something happen now on this far side. Zay plays it inside, but it's read well by our team. And now Marino forward to Gomez, the Brazilian, trying to pick out Rojas in behind. Sadly, he couldn't get there. Bournemouth trying to ruin the clean sheet. That looked offside. The player scored linesman. Linesman, okay, his flag was raised. I was about to say, that looked a mile off, didn't it? Four minutes of added time at the end of this game. Is there to be any late drama? The answer is no. It finishes 3-0 here. Another really, really emphatic performance. Bournemouth 
did not have a shot on target. That result there does see us maintain our spot top of the league. Sunderland, who were in third, they failed to win. They lost a crew 1-0. Elsewhere, however, Wrexham, who, who of course beat us last episode, they've snuck up to third. They're going pretty well. Roger Ospina, man of the match. We're going to give him some praise. And with that result there, truth be told, I feel like I don't need to worry about league matches in episodes anymore. So with that being considered, I think next time out... FA Cup game against Brighton is the obvious game to come back for. It's the fifth round. They're currently now 11th in the Premier League. If we win that game, maybe we'll do the next FA Cup game. If we fail to win that, well, at the very least, we should have a youth intake to look forward to. And based on our historical youth intakes, maybe it can be a good one. Bees really shouldn't be that bad. Today's episode has been a bit of an unexpected mammoth one to both record and edit. If you made it to the end of things, I hope you enjoyed the longer video. We are back tomorrow with that FA Cup game. I will see you guys for that next time. Next time, take things easy. It's me, Jack. I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.